Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today, let's look at the text, especially the immigration text. Now, this is in the first draft format. There might be changes to it. We'll also look at some of the USCIS alerts that have come in that might be of significance to you. And there are specific questions about how we can contact USCIS on the phone. What are the options? Things like that. And lastly, we'll talk about the job changes while on adjustment of status. So a lot of content. Watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I have say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. And today's video is sponsored by Webull. They will guarantee you $34 worth of stocks if you open an account using my link and deposit at least one penny. More about that later. Now I'd like to remind you that there are links in the description that are for affiliate products. So if you buy any of those using the link, the channel will get a little bit of a commission. And if you want to get in touch with me, the best way is Patreon site. Do sign up for Patreon. Also give me about two to three days to respond to your question. That's how long it takes me to get to your question. And if there is any urgency, do ping me and I will try to attend it earlier. Now Joe Manchin, who is the centrist Democrat, has suddenly agreed to reconciliation package. Just a couple of weeks back, he had clearly said that this was not a deal, that he did not want to do anything that will flare up inflation even more further. But looks like Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was able to get a deal done with Senator Manchin. And I hate to say this, that the exact same text that was used in the last year's reconciliation package that was removed is being inserted into this year's immigration reconciliation package as well. But let's take a look at it. Now this is actually the committee print and as you can see this is this bill is a draft for use of committee and its staff only in preparation for the markup. So this is going to undergo some changes so there might be a little bit of a difference between the final version and this version but this at least gives us an indication of what's in the package right now. Making appropriations for the Department of Homeland Security for the fiscal year ending September 30th 2023 so this will continue until the next year. Now I want to get to page 57, actually that's where the immigration content that we are interested in is really. So here it is, recapture of unused immigrate, immigrant visa numbers. First they talk about the recapture of all the unused visas for family sponsored visas. So it, it says notwithstanding the numerical limit state forth in this section or in the sections 202 and 203, beginning in the fiscal year of 2023, the number of family sponsored immigrant visas that may be issued under the section 203a shall be increased by the number of com the number computed under sub paragraph b so what is sub paragraph b the number computed under the sub paragraph is the difference if any between the number of visas that were originally made available to family sponsored immigrant section for fiscal years 1992 through 9, uh, 2022, setting aside any unused visas made available to such immigrants in such fiscal years under the section. So what basically it says is, if there were any visa numbers that were not used from 1992 until 2020, which is about 30 years of unused visa numbers from family base, will be recaptured and given back to the family base. So if this bill passes, they will all be made available in the next fiscal year. Now it goes on to say the same thing applies for employment based as well. So uh, we will not read through the entire text, but we'll see the number of visas that were originally made available to employment based uh, immigrant section 201D for fiscal years 1992 through 2002 set aside in any unused visas made available to such immigrants in the fiscal year. So basically the same applies for employment based section if there were any unused visa numbers available since 1992 through 2022 which is 30 years worth of unused visas they could be easily into 200 to 300 um, uh, thousand range that will be a significant visa numbers available 
for the next year so uh, now if this passes there could be a significant progression in eb category dates so we'll see what happens with this now the one of the downfalls uh, downsides of this is the spillover numbers that they have mentioned uh, from uh, fb to eb usually they are if there are any spillover numbers if there are any unused numbers from fb category they spill over to eb category and they are already used now if they are talking about all these numbers that are unused by fb category which have already been used up or given to eb category to be used in all these 30 years what happens to those numbers any leftovers was given to eb category eb category has already consumed those numbers so are they really available so uh, that question is complicated i don't have an answer for that but at least on the face value what it says is all the unused visa numbers from fb category will go back to fb category and unused visa numbers for eb category will be made available for eb category for all of these 30 years between 1992 to 2022 which is current year so that is a significant piece of legislation if passed will have significant impact on the progression of the priority dates in october and beyond so i know for sure that some of you are interested in stock trading day trading buying cryptocurrencies i want to present you webull webull is a trading platform it allows you to buy stocks it allows you to buy options do options trading and also it allows you to buy cryptocurrency it can be done on the computer or on the mobile app now if you use my link which is on the screen and also in the description you will get some free stocks how do you do it three steps sign up using my link open an account that's when you get two stocks deposit one penny into account and you get another four stocks so those are six stocks absolutely free for you anywhere between 34 dollars and it can go as high as thousand dollars if you are lucky so check out the link in the description for webull and enjoy your free stocks now another big news is that the chips and science bill is on its way to biden's desk so it was approved in the house and it was approved in the senate now what this bill is is it will incentivize the u.s semiconductors chip manufacturers to manufacture chips in the united states so as you know in the last two or three years there has been a chip shortage because of the pandemic because of the war in ukraine and uh, supply chain issues the chip manufacturers are mostly in taiwan in china and in the southern southern asian countries and they take a long time to get to united states to be put into the phones and cars and things like that us has us congress has passed a law and it's going to the biden's desk for signature which will allow chip manufacturers in the us which will incentivize chip manufacturers in the us to prepare or to make chips in the united states so if you think about it companies like intel nvidia apple samsung qualcomm and many others can now manufacture chips in the united states so they will be readily available you don't have to rely on the supply chain from international borders it will be all within the us so it will be much easier it will be available for the manufacturing of the cars and cell phones and refrigerators and appliances and things like that it is also great news for our engineers who are in stem field right anybody who is working on the hardware system on chip things like that any uh, they will have more jobs within the united states with this law passing so this is actually a good news the reconciliation package also includes the diversity visa recapture numbers and those those numbers will be recaptured since 2017 and that aligns with when there were restrictions put by trump administration on travel and visa visa ban basically for for all of these countries so those those visas will be recaptured and will be given uh, will be made available for the diversity visa lottery so this is all the attempt to get all these people who had difficulty coming to us or if they were in the us getting a green card to allow them to have a green card so this is very politically motivated but regardless it will have a good impact on immigrant immigrants coming into the united states now let's read some text from usais's twitter account because they did a lot of text in this so first one of them is the campaign against human trafficking which is good the second one I would like to read out is we have published an additional online resource to provide an overview of some of the temporary and permanent pathways for non-citizens to work in the United States in the field of science, technology, engineering and math. So this is a very good news. They have so nothing new. They haven't created any subcategories or visas and things like that. They have just consolidated all this information on one single page. 
So as you can see here on the USCIS page, option for non-citizen STEM professionals to work in the United States. So they have prepared some sections. Uh, and as you can see, summary of pathways for STEM employment in the United States. This is a non-immigrant pathway. So if you are a STEM uh, graduate from a university in the United States, these are the pathways for you to stay and work. So first one is F1 OPT. The second one is H1B. Then O1 for extraordinary ability. L1A intra-company transferee managing, management or executive. L1B intra-company transferee of a specialized knowledge worker. TN visa, which is NAFTA visa, which is available for Canadian and Mexican citizens. And if you are looking for immigrant permanent pathway, then you have EB, EB category visas, right? So for STEM candidates, EB1A, EB1B, EB1C, EB2, uh, EB2 national interest waiver, and EB3. So all of these. So nothing new here, just that the USCIS has consolidated this information for STEM graduates uh, to come and take a look at it and see where you can qualify so that you don't have, uh, so you have the right information in front of you in order to be able to stay in the United States and continue your work. Now, next topic I wanted to cover is a lot of people come to me and ask me about how do we contact USCIS? Now, there are a couple of ways you can do that. There is an ask Emma, you can ask a question. You can actually go through your senator or congressman. That is also an efficient way. Yeah, there is no guaranteed success through that route. They will just make an inquiry and uh, get you the status of your case. So that is that is one thing that you can do through senators and congressmen. The uh, the really important and urgent way of reaching out to United States uh, to USCIS is through their phone number. And phone number is public. I don't need to. I'll put somewhere in the description. But it's uh, with a simple Google search, you will find the USCIS phone number. What is really key is because of the because of the huge volume of phone calls that they get, they usually have an automatic bot or voice attendant. So it's not an actual person who talks to you right away. So what you have to do is you have to specifically select some particular options which will allow you to talk to a real officer. So there are some instances such as if you don't have a case number or if you don't know, um, if, you, if you don't select any of the uh, given selections in the phone. So they will they will ask you to press one for this, one or two for that. If you go and select others, that will take you to the next menu. And in the next menu, if, if you select none of those provided menu options and select nine or zero, that should take you to the, uh, the actual visa officer. Now, there are two tier officers. First one is tier one officer, which is the help desk support. They have minimum information. They, they would just have probably access to your case status and just give you some general information to your questions that you will ask. But if you really want to make a difference in your case, if you want to kind of upgrade your case, make sure their documents have reached, if you want to get any more information about your case, you'll have to talk to the tier two officer. So um, the only way to reach the tier two officer is exhaust your questions with your tier one officer uh, to a point where they are not no longer able to answer them and then request them gently to be passed on to tier two officer that might work it's really tricky i have tried it several times it's very hard to get in touch with a real uh, visa officer but if you try a couple of times you'll get through so that is something that i thought would be interesting to all of you now the last topic i wanted to cover in today's video is uh, the job change during the adjustment of status now nowadays there, the economy is very hot there is a lot of there are a lot of jobs in the market and people change jobs like they are changing their clothes and there is no issue with that the only issue is if you are in a critical stage of your adjustment of status, if your green card, if your final action date is current and your green card is about to come, I would suggest just wait until you get your green card and then change the job. I get so many questions asking about can I change a job? I just uh, did my I just did my case upgrade. I just did my case downgrade, whatever the situation may be. And you are so close to getting your green card and now you are looking for another job. Why not wait for just a few more months? Wait until October, wait until December, January, just few more months. We are already waited for uh, so many years. If you put your job search on hold for just few more months, your life will be really easy because now you get your green card and then you are able to change your job. Now, another thing is only change your job if you are going to stick with it for a long time. If it's significantly better than your current job, don't just go for the sake of it just because you are getting 5,000 or 10,000 more on another job. You, you could do that later on when after you get your green card 
But if you are in this critical stage of uh, adjustment of status, don't just quit a job just because you get next job. I would only change the job if it's a significant progression to my career and if it's a really long term job that I want to stick around with. If not, I would just focus on completing my green card process and then change the job. So really, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If I haven't talked about any particular topic and if you want me to, just note down in the comment section below and, and I'll be happy to make one video about it. And if you haven't subscribed so far, please do subscribe. If you like the content of this video, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.